Welcome to the IG. My name is Mackie Hall, and I've got a thing for isometrics. And with that in mind, we are going to build a three letter isometric cubic logo. All you need to do to do this technique is make a square, use the blend tool, and use the shape builder tool. And if you don't know how to do it, we'll take care of you. We're going to take a tried and true radio logo and level it up to build this. And yeah, we're going to cut out those letters. Let's go. Now, before we get started, I want to mention a few things. First thing I want to mention is that our document size is 1,000 points wide by 1,000 points tall. We've got a single artboard, and we're going to be using the RGB color build. Go ahead and build your document to match those parameters if you want to go with exactly what's on screen. Next thing I want to mention is that we are using the Essentials Classic layout. In order to switch to the Essentials Classic layout, all you need to do is go to the top right hand corner of your page, select Switch Workspace, and then select Essentials Classic. Now, if you're not using the Essentials Classic layout, if you're more comfortable using a different layout, by all means do so. We'll be sure to guide you in the appropriate directions as we go forward. Next thing I want to mention is that we are using Smart Guides. To activate Smart Guides, all you need to do is go to View, Smart Guides, or select Control U. Smart Guides is kind of cool because it shows us exactly where we are on our page and what we can do on our page as we're doing it. Next thing I want to mention is that we're building this piece on a PC. That means anytime we make any hotkey or key command recommendations and we recommend the control key, instead select the command key if you're using an Apple or Mac device. Again, command equals control. All right, let's get started. First thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and grab our rectangle tool. And let's click and drag out a rectangular shape around the middle of our artboard. We're going to hold our shift key to make sure it's perfectly symmetrical. So instead of a rectangle, yep, it's a square. Now, once that's done, we don't need our entire square. Instead, we just need the left and right lines that are in parallel. How do we get that? Piece of cake. All we need to do is grab our direct selection tool, deselect our shape, and then drag across our shape from top to bottom, just like that. What will that do? that only selects the top line segment and the bottom line segment. Let's go ahead and backspace once or delete. And that's exactly what we've got. Let's go ahead and deselect. Perfect. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to get those line segments in between our original line segments. To do that, we'll select our blend tool. Then we're going to select the top of our left line segment. Notice that when we hover over it, it goes black. That means it's over an anchor point. And let's go do the same thing on the top of our right line segment. We'll click and release. And notice once you get that fill just like that, let's go ahead and bring down the line segments. To do that, all we need to do, let's go ahead and double click on our blend tool. Let's switch our spacing from smooth color to specified steps. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to change the number of steps from whatever is on screen, whatever is that default, to seven. Once we've got that, let's go ahead and click OK. That is exactly what we're looking for. Now, Let's go ahead and get our isometric lines. How do we do that? With our line segments and blended line segments still selected, let's go ahead and double click on our rotate tool. Once we've got that, let's go ahead and switch our rotate angle from whatever the default is to 60 degrees. Next thing we're going to do is we'll select copy. That's the isometric angle we're looking for. What's next? Now we need to do it for the other direction. The way we do that, let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's deselect our shape and then select our original line segments once again. Let's go ahead and double click on our rotate tool. This time around, we're going to switch our rotate angle from 60 to negative 60, just like that. Let's go ahead and click copy. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool and deselect. Next thing we want to do is we want to take those blend lines that we've got. Notice if I select any of our line segments, only our outside line segments appear to be selected. Everything in between, they're blend segments. So how do we make those real? Piece of cake. What we're going to do is we're going to select all of our line segments, just like that, including our blend segments. Let's go up to Object. Let's select Expand. And when the Expand window comes up, let's go ahead and make sure the default is set at Object, Fill, and Stroke selected. Let's go ahead and click OK. Check out what happens to our blend lines. Note straight away that they are actual line segments now. Let's go ahead and deselect. Now, before we get started, let's talk about our shape. If you look closely, 
On initial look, it's awfully tough to decode the sides of our isometric cube. If you take what's superimposed, you can see our cube, and then you can see our left side, our top, and our right side right there. And each of those sides, as you can see from the art on the top left-hand corner of my artboard, we are going to write N on the left, P on the top, and R on the right side. We're going to work in that very sequence right there. So how do we do that? We're going to use the Shape Builder tool, and the Shape Builder tool is a piece of cake to work with. It takes multiple shapes and creates a singular shape out of that. But before we do that, let's talk about our letters. We're going to make capital letters out of all of those letters, and note one thing, when we do that, there's no line shape for the N or the capital R. So how do we fix that? Piece of cake. What we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab our pen tool, and then let's get started. We're gonna start at the bottom right-hand corner of our N. We'll hover over the intersect point just like that. I'm gonna click and release. And then I'm gonna go three up and two over, and then I'm gonna click on the intersect point on the other side right there. That looks good right there. Click and release. Now, if I wanna deselect that shape, piece of cake, all I need to do is grab my selection tool. Let's go ahead and deselect from there and that is part of our shape. Let's do the other part of our end stem. Again, we're going to grab our pen tool. We'll go one over, we'll click on the intersect point, and then we're gonna go three up and two over again, and let's select the intersect point right there. You can see how we're doing that. I'll click and release. Let me grab my selection tool. Let's deselect, and you can see the N in there. Now, if we look at the P on top of our cube, you'll notice we don't need any additional lines. However, with the R, we do need a couple of additional lines. We're gonna do the same thing as we did with the N, except we're just gonna do a couple of shorter lines instead. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and grab our pen tool, and let's go to the right part of our cube side. I'll click and release, and then I'm gonna go one up and one over just like that. Hover over the intersect point, that's perfect right there. I'll click and release. And again, I could go ahead and grab our selection tool, but I'm going to show you a trick. If I press my control or command key, notice what happens to my pen tool. It switches over to the direct selection tool and I can click and release anywhere on our artboard and it deselects that line segment. With that in mind, let's go ahead and release our control key or command key and let's continue. Next, we're going to go one over. I'll click and release at the intersect point. Then I'm going to go one up and one over one more time and click and release at that intersect point too. Now that I've got that, I'm going to grab my selection tool. Let's deselect and check it out. Now we've got all the line segments that we need to create our shape. Next thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and take advantage of our Shape Builder tool to start working with our Shape Builder tool. Again, to take all these multiple line segments and shapes and make them into singular shapes, what we're going to need to do first is let's grab our selection tool, let's drag across our entire shape just like that so that it is selected. Let's go ahead and grab our Shape Builder tool. The Shape Builder tool operates by clicking and dragging across our shape. That's how it's going to make individual shapes. Check it out with the end. I'm going to start at the bottom of our end, just like that. I'm going to click and drag up. And if I release, check it out, we've created an individual shape from there. Let's go ahead and finish out our end. We'll release, grab our selection tool you can now see where the N is. Let's go ahead and grab our Shape Builder tool. Let's build out our P. All we need to do is drag up from the stem, and then let's drag around for the rest of the P, just like that. That's perfect right there. Let's go ahead and do the R as well. We'll start with the left stem. We'll click and drag up. We'll drag across to get the body of the R, and we'll do the bottom of the body as well. Next, let's go ahead and finish out that bottom stem. Piece of cake just like that. Let's grab our selection tool. Let's go ahead and deselect, and you can see all the individual shapes. Now, there might be some legacy shapes left over. As a matter of fact, I can see one in the P right now. If there is that legacy shape, all I need to do is grab my direct selection tool, select that shape right there, and just hit backspace twice or delete twice to make that go away. Now, now that we've got that, we don't need to make any other changes. All we need to do is to select our letter shapes and get rid of the rest. Here's how we do that. Let's grab our selection tool. Let's drag across all of our shapes just like that. And just for safety, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Object, Ungroup. 
We can also select to shift control G. That's going to take all those shapes that may be grouped together and make sure that they're all individual. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and deselect our shape. Let's select our end first with our selection tool. Let's hold our shift key. Let's select the P and then let's select the R. Once we've got those individual shapes selected, all we need to do is go to edit, cut. Let's keep our selection tool selected and let's drag across the rest of the shapes just like that. Let's hit backspace once. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to edit and let's go ahead and select paste in front or control F. Now that we've got that, take a look. We deselect. We've got the N, P, and R shapes within the isometric cube on screen. Looks pretty good. Let's refine it. Let's really nail this. First thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and grab our direct selection tool. What we're going to do is we're going to round the corners of our P and the R. First thing I'm going to do, we're going to select the bottom right anchor point of our R. I'm going to drag that curve in just like that. That looks pretty good. Let's deselect. I'm going to do that for the, all the other edges of our R and our P. Check it out. Click and drag on the top right there. That looks pretty decent right there. Let's deselect. Let's do the same thing with our P. I'm going to click and drag that in about halfway. And then I'm going to drag my P about that same distance. Again, I'm clicking on the anchor point. I'm going to select the bevel point. I'm going to pull that in just a little bit. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and deselect. And now you can clearly see the N, P, and R. Now let's really refine it. Let's bring it all into view as clearly as possible. How are we going to do that? Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's select all of our shapes right here. And let's increase that stroke of the N, P, and R from one point to six point. We can either use our top bar, our right side bar, or of course we can increase it on the stroke window itself. On the right side bar right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to up click until we get to six points. That looks really good. Let's go ahead and deselect and notice what happened. It looks good, but check out the corners of our cube. Notice how those stroke corners are overlapping. How do we fix that? Again, piece of cake. What we're going to do again, let's drag across our shape and let's open up our stroke window. Now there are three ways to do that. You can either click on your stroke window on top, just like that. Our stroke window will pop up. You can do it on your right side and your stroke window will pop up. Or if you don't see any of those, of course you can go to Window, Stroke, or select Control F10. Now once that's up, all we need to do is go to our corners and select Round Join. Check out what happens to our shape right there. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape, take a look at what that looks like. That is perfect. Now we've got a really good logo right there, but let's level it up just a little bit. How are we gonna do that? Let's go ahead and add some color to it. The first thing we're going to do is let's select our N, let's double click on our fill, and let's see if we can find an orange to match that orange on the logo at the top left. That looks pretty good right there. I'll select that, click off that. Let's deselect, that looks really good. Now we could make our P black, but I don't think that's dynamic enough. Instead, let's go ahead and make it a dark yellow. Let's double click on that white fill. Let's find a yellow that we can like. That's pretty good right there. Let's make it a little bit smoky. That looks good. Let's click OK. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape one more time. Now let's make our R that dynamic blue. I like that. Let's double click on our white fill. Let's find that blue that might work for us. That looks pretty good right there. Let's make it a little darker than that, about right there. Click OK. Let's deselect our shape. Now we've got a powerhouse logo. Let's do one more thing to level it up. Let's go ahead and make a copy of this. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to drag across my shape just like that. I'm going to go to Edit, Copy, select Edit, Paste in front. And then I'm going to hold my Shift key along with my directional keys. And I'm going to arrow straight down. This gives us a secondary copy right like that. Next thing I'm going to do with my copy selected, I'm going to double click on my stroke. And then let's change our stroke color from black to white. Let's go ahead and click OK. Keep our selection tool selected. Let's go ahead and deselect and check out the logo that we made. Again, an isometric cubed three letter logo. Now it's your turn. See what you can do. With that, we are done. Well done. Now use these tools to lift up your logo designs. Check out a few examples right here. Now that we've got that covered, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time. Peace.